afternoon, everyone. I hope you all are doing well. So IRCC made some major announcements yet again today on August 8, uh, sorry, September 18, 2024. We had some big announcements last month in August where they ended the policy for visitor to work permit uh, conversions and then they, they made some big changes to the LMI category or the low wage stream of the LMI applications as well. Um, we were expecting uh, for the minister to speak today and make some changes and it was it was anticipated that he's going to be making changes or announcing changes to the LMI program again but it was not the case it was more so to do with PGWPs and um, study permits um, these were expected that these changes were coming um, but uh, at such short notice uh, wasn't expected but 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 it is what it is and here are the changes the first big change is on for the study permit uh, intake cap we know currently there's a cap on study permit applications which is set at 485000 applications in 2024 this number will be reduced by 10 percent next year in 2025 setting the new cap at 437000 applications now the big one here is that this year for this year's cap 2024 cap masters and phd students were not included but in the next year, 2025 cap, masters and study permit, uh, masters and PhD students will be included, and they will also have to submit a provincial attestation letter with their application. Right now, master students, PhD students do not need to obtain a, a provincial attestation letter, and they're not a part of the cap. But next year onwards, they will be needing one, and they will be need, they will have to submit that with their application, and they will be included in the cap of 437,000. The second big change that we are hearing is on the eligibility of postgraduate work permits. Starting November 1st, 2024, international students applying for postgraduate work permits will have to submit a, a language test result with their application. And they will have to prove that if they're a university graduate, they, they have a CLB 7 on their language test result. And if they're a college graduate, so basically a diploma or a certificate holder, and then there they will have to submit a CLB 5 report. That could be a French test, that could be an English test, that could be a self pip that could be um, uh, an IELTS, that could be a PTE, that could also be um, the TEF Canada or the TCF Canada. So make sure that starting November 1st, whoever is applying for the postgraduate work permit, they must submit their language results with their application. Otherwise, it is possible that the applications will be refused or you will not be eligible for postgraduate work permit. Another big change is um, that postgraduate um, eligibility, work permit eligibility will be restricted only to graduates from a field of study that is linked to an occupation in long-term shortage. Now, we don't know what those shortages are right now. We don't have that list. We also don't know when that policy will be implemented. Um, there is no date for that, but definitely for submitting a language test result that is um, um, that comes in effect on or after November 1st, 2024. So make sure if you're submitting your application on November 1st or after you submit your language test result. So these are two big changes that is, I think, going to affect a lot of temporary residents or international students here in Canada. And then another change that they are going to be announcing later this year, actually they announced, but the policy will be implemented later this year, is about the eligibility for spouses of uh, international students and um, work permit holders. Now we know currently uh, that um, IRCC has already limited the work permit eligibility for spouses of international students to only those international students who are pursuing a master's or PhD program here. And of course, some of the bachelor programs. But now, um, later this year, IRCC is going to restrict it either fur even further. So, only spouses of international students who are pursuing a master's degree of 16 months or longer in duration will be eligible for a, for a work permit. Anybody whose spouse is um, pursuing a program, a master's program of one year or less than 16 months will no longer be eligible for a work permit. I'm talking about spouses, okay? And then the second um, change under the same category is uh, limiting work permit eligibility for spouses of foreign workers who are working in management or professional occupations or in sectors with labor shortage. We know right now that spouses of uh, foreign workers 
uh, with a job in tier 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all of them are eligible. But our IRCC is going to restrict that going forward and only going to limit it to spouses or foreign workers who are working in, in management or professional occupations or in sectors with labor shortages. So I think these are big changes. I think it's very clear from what IRCC has been doing, um, you know, in the past few months that they're extremely dedicated and hell bent on reducing the number of temporary residents in Canada. And this means in simple words that there will be a lot of temporary residents who will have to at some point either leave Canada, go back or uh, will not. And the ones who are outside Canada will not be able to come here if they are not or their experiences or their um, education or, you know, their ultimate goal um, of coming to Canada is not aligned with Canadian goals. I think that's very straight and clear. Uh, they cannot they cannot say it clearer than this. People who needs who should get the message or who need this message should get the message by all these announcements that are coming. Um, so, um, you know, instead of fist fighting the government at this point, I think it's time to just step back. Um, if you're not one of those people who can easily get through this um, or who's, who, who's, who's actually been in an industry that the Canadian government is focusing on, it's going to be hard for you. Um, I, I don't think I can say it any clearer than this as well. And the government has also said it loud and clear. They are going to send people back and they are going to limit the number of temporary residents in Canada from the 65 uh, of Canada's total population down to 5% by 2026. So that means people will either leave Canada, some of them will transition to PR, the ones who cannot will go back and then new people will, own, will be restricted from coming to Canada. So in short, Canada has closed its doors.